Welcome to another episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. We're going to build an ETL pipeline with Amazon Redshift and AWS Glue. If you recall from our last episode, we learned how to deploy data warehouse with Pulumi and Amazon Redshift. Uh, we covered using Pulumi to load unstructured data for our Am from Amazon S3 into an Amazon Redshift cluster. And at the end of that episode, there are a few unanswered questions. For example, how do we avoid importing and processing the same data twice? How can we transform the data during the ingestion process? And what are our options for loading data automatically? For example, on a regular schedule. So when your platform of choice is Amazon Redshift, those questions will often be answered by pointing you to another Amazon service. Uh, for example, AWS Glue. So with Glue, you can define processes that monitor external data sources like S3, keep track of data that's already been processed, and write code in general purpose programming languages like Python to process and transform the data on its way into Redshift. There's a lot more you can do with Glue, However, for this project, it's just what we need. Uh, watch the previous video to get up to speed on what we're building and why. Uh, when we left off, we've gotten Redshift up and running, and we were able to pull the data from S3 into Redshift directly by running a manual query in the Redshift console. But that's as far as we got. There was no automation, no protection from duplicate records, just the absolute basics. So we're gonna pick up from there. Uh, just to quickly recap, uh, we deployed a VPC with a private subnet, a Redshift cluster deployed into the subnet, an S3 bucket that will use to hold some raw data, and a VPC endpoint allowing direct access to the bucket over the private network. So now it's time to add in glue. At a high level, we'll need three components to complete our ETL pipeline to be. Um, one, a glue crawler. So the crawler is responsible for fetching data from some external source. Uh, for us, it's an S3 bucket. And then importing it into a glue catalog. A catalog is a kind of staging database that tracks your data through the ingestion process. Our particular crawler will pull our S3 bucket for new data and import that into a catalog table. Two, a glue job. The job is responsible for running an ETL script on a schedule to process the data imported by the crawler into the catalog. And then finally, three, a glue script. The script is where all the ETL magic happens. Ours will be written in Python and be responsible for extracting data from the catalog, applying some slight transformations to it, and loading the transformed data into Redshift. So next we'll translate these high level components into concrete Plumy resources. Step one, adding a glue crawler. Uh, so the first thing is we'll need a unique name for a glue catalog. So we'll set it using Plumy config here. All right, now back in the editor, what we'll do is copy in some code for the glue crawler. So do that. All right, so, so this pulls in the glue database name. Um, this piece of code defines an AWS cron expression, so it runs every 15 minutes. Um, this is specifically creating the glue catalog, and then this is defining an IAM role granting glue access to the S3 bucket that we created up, up here. And then finally, this is the glue crawler to process the contents of the data bucket on a schedule. So we're feeding it in the name, the Roll and then the schedule. And 
and then we're also pulling in uh, the S3 bucket from above. Okay. So let's run, let's save this and run a quick pull me up. Okay, that is now done. Now let's add the glue job. So, so this is step two, adding the glue job. Uh, we're gonna paste in some code again. Okay, this job is fairly simple, but still requires a few different AWS resources. So here we create a glue connection to the Redshift cluster. Um, it's just pulling in the username and password that we defined from Polymy config. Uh, then we'll need a S3 bucket. This is where glue is gonna look for the glue script that we'll cover in step three. Um, we will upload the glue script into the S3 bucket. And then this is the glue job that runs the uh, ETL script. Um, so in here, you'll see uh, we're passing in the connection. Uh, then it's defining how big uh, all, all the compute resources and settings that you'll need uh, for the glue job. Uh, so we're passing in more uh, variables of various sorts that were defined earlier in the code. And then lastly, uh, we're going to create a glue trigger to run the job every 15 minutes. So uh, the glue crawler crawls every 15 minutes and then the job will be triggered to run every 15 minutes as well. So before we deploy this, uh, we'll need a script. So step three is we're gonna add the glue script. So we gotta create a new file here. We're gonna call it gluejob.py. And we'll copy in the code here. Saves. So there's a lot going on in this script, but the general gist is that when it runs, it'll extract all unprocessed data from our glue catalog, transform that data using a simple mapping to tweak some field names. Uh, again, this is just to demonstrate how that's done. And then it loads the resulting data into Redshift. A glue job bookmark A glue job bookmark guarantees that we don't process the same data more than once. All right, with that, we are now ready to deploy. So run, pull me up, and let's get that going. Oops, forgot to save. Let's try that again. Okay. All right, that is done. All right, now let's load some sample data. So, like the previous episode, we simulated this part since we don't have an actual application generating real data for us. So we're gonna run a few, we're gonna run the following commands to write a few JSON records to a file called events1txt. So do that. 
And then with the AWS CLI, we'll upload that file into an S3 data bucket using the name we exported at the end of the last deployment. So that thing. All right, and that should be it. Okay, now we wait for the glue job and crawler to kick off. Um, but in the meantime, let's take a look at the AWS console real quick. So here we have our Redshift. Uh, let's see. See that there is a cluster that we created. So that is good. And then let's go to the glue console. And all right, so yeah, there, this is the glue data catalog that was created uh, from our Polymy code. And then this is the crawler. And yeah, it should be uh, crawling every 15 minutes. So um, we'll, I'm gonna take a break here and come back and hopefully it's crawled and we can uh, finish out uh, today's episode. All right, so the crawler has finished crawling. You can see that there was a crawl that run that started here and there was one table change. So that looks good. Uh, we'll jump into the job section and we'll look at this glue job here. Take a look at runs and we'll see that a run has succeeded. And so that's good. Um, successful run. So let's go into the Redshift console next and just verify that our data is there. So let's see, this is our cluster. We can query our data here. And okay, we're gonna run a query in my Redshift cluster. So let's see, select star. From events. Okay. Let's see if that. And that is great. That is exactly the events that we put in events one txt. So we can also, um, you know, put in some more data. So if we. Flip back here. All right, so do that. Upload that to S3 bucket as well. All right, so that's gonna kick off and go again in the glue job. But what I wanted to show with this next thing is um, because of the way that we set up the glue job bookmark, it's able to ignore events dash one when it's processing and process only events dash two and get it all into uh, the right place. So um, we're gonna take a quick break and let the job run. So let's see. Okay, so glue console was crawled. Um, it was able to pick up the new file we put into the S3 bucket. Now let's go into jobs real quick. Go back to this glue job here. And yep, so that succeeded so that worked we can jump to the redshift console and query our data real quick 
to see if those events were added in. Uh, so let's see if we can do that here. So we will run this and excellent. So the events from events to TXT made it in four and five. So that is excellent. So we know that our glue job works. Um, so the crawler was able to crawl the S3 bucket, pick up the new file, and then the glue job ingested it, but it blissfully ignored the older file that already was processed, you know, thanks to the glue job bookmark. And then it was able to take all the new events and drop those events, those records, right into the redshift in this table. To conclude, we did quite a lot here. So from previous episode, we took, uh, we set up a Redshift data warehouse and it was able to ingest things from S3 and process it. So in this episode, we spun that back up and then we added a few different things uh, using AWS Glue. We, we built out an ETL pipeline. So we set up a group a glue crawler that was able to fetch data from um, our S3 bucket, then a glue job that executed a ETL script and a glue script itself that did a lot of all the ETL magic, like extracting the data, applying transformations and loading it into Redshift. Now that that's all working, um, you know, we only touched the surface level of Redshift and glue. Um, so th there is so much more that is possible with these tools. So highly recommend y'all to dig into the documentation to explore both of them in more depth. And once you're up and running with Redshift, uh, you might also want to check out this MetaBase package in the Plumi registry. Uh, this MetaBase package makes it easy to deploy MetaBase alongside Redshift on AWS. So it allows you to build powerful data analysis and visualization experiences with your data. Um, and here at Pulumi, we actually uh, use this um, as our BI tool on top of our data warehouse. So with that, I uh, just wanna thank everyone for joining on this episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. My name is Aaron Cal, your host. Thank you.